A train station in Berlin, February. It's 5.50 a.m. My fingers are frozen around a paper cup of vending machine coffee. I was up all night editing my first ever neuroscience video. I was so nervous. And in this moment, I really asked myself, why are you doing this? Why are you standing here in the middle of the night? And to be honest, I didn't have a good answer for that. I just knew if I didn't try now, I could never forget my, forgive myself. So looking now back after posting over 1,000 videos and building two companies, I really have to say this whole journey wasn't about hustle, it wasn't about discipline, and it was not about motivation. It was all about resilience, about the power to stay consistent even when it gets hard. We all live in a culture that celebrates the beginnings. People clap when you start. People cheer to you when you show them your plan, when you show them, okay, this is what I want to do in the future. Dopamine hits in, you get excited. But the truth is, after a few months, after a year, it gets silent. There's nobody clapping anymore. Nobody cheers on you. You're all alone. But if you talk to people that truly built something meaningful, founders, creators, whoever you talk to, they all say one thing. It's not about the start. It's about sticking to the plan, even when it gets boring. So, we should ask ourselves, ourselves, what makes someone stay? Not what makes someone start, what makes someone stay? You see, I just believe that it's all about forcing myself to keep showing up. I thought it's about being tough, about discipline. But I understood now, about two years ago, that the real thing, the real switch is understanding the wiring of your brain. Consistency is an everyday battle of two systems. One system that screams comfort the whole time. It wants direct gratification. It wants enjoyment. The other system screams, keep going. It says, stay rational. Think about your next moves. It's for delayed gratification. So we have these two systems that battle each other. In neuroscience, we often describe this as a tug of war between the limbic system and the prefrontal cortex. And when you stay consistent, when you achieve success, then you can really break it down to one simple habit. Your prefrontal cortex wins more often than your limbic system. It wins this battle more often. And here's the good news. Your brain was not born with this. It's a behavior you can train, you can practice. So how do we train consistency? To answer that, we need to go back in time, about 100,000 years ago. Imagine you're standing in the open step. A light breeze brushes against your face. You're looking towards the horizon, and then suddenly you hear a noise. Your heartbeat spikes, your muscle tense, every sense sharpens. The next moments could decide your entire fate. In these moments, success was not about 
building something. It was not about running through a four months program and staying consistent. Success in this time meant simply just staying alive. Your brain evolved in exactly that world. That is why we are drawn to feel what's good now and not in the future. We are drawn to direct gratification, not delayed. So, no, there's nothing wrong with you if consistency feels hard. Your, ba your brain just wasn't built for this. But here's the twist. These ancient wirings in our brain, they're still running the show. The only thing is, our enemy switched positions. We're not fighting against predators anymore, or at least I hope no one does it here, but we are fighting for focus. The real war is you against a world of full distractions. So only the context change. The brain didn't. And this is where things get messy. Because how do we win this fight for focus? Let me ask you something. Who of you in the last years ever had an idea of a business or something to go through and started out, but after a few months, let it go? Please raise your hand. Okay, a few of you. So, in the last seven years, I started all over with 10, more than 10 business ideas. And what I learned in this time is really that every business, at some point, every business gets to a certain point where it feels almost impossible to win. Every business, there's no exception. And this is exactly the point where you can differentiate, differentiate the ones that stick, that get to success, to the ones that fail in this exact moment. Because it happens in your brain. You decide when you give up. So we, creators and founders, we repeat the same loop over and over again until we finally get it. Start, quit, repeat. Start, quit, repeat. All the time. When, in fact, you just need to stick when it gets boring. You just need to stick when it seems impossible. So, only one thing really changed for me. I decided to not aim to make the process easier. I decided to really fall in love with the struggle, to love the struggle, to seek for the struggle. And I teached my brain with that. I know it sounds strange, but let me explain. There was a study in 2016 from Cornell and Vaughan, and they learned that even failed attempts of trying to remember something can strengthen memory. But, here's the point, if only they are followed with direct feedback. So, what can we learn of that? When your brain experiences something followed by direct resolution, then painful effort is not the problem. The real problem is when you don't reward the effort. So this is what we must do. That's exactly the point that we can solve. So I started experimenting. Every time I pushed through this resistance, this moment when I felt, this is too hard, I need to give up. Every time when that happened, I sit down, I took my book, that's a little journal I have, I called it my gamification journal, and I write exactly down 
what I learn in this moment, what I feel in this moment. And that's important. It's not about thinking about it, it's about writing it down. To break it down into words and make it specific. That's the first step. And then the second step is, after I reflected on that, I give myself gratification. Something that makes me happy personally. And this can differentiate between all of you. For me, it's music. I love music and it gives me joy. And over time, I noticed with this step, my brain shifted. It shifted from craving for effort to craving struggle. Because my brain knew when I reach struggle, I get this direct feedback and I get this direct gratification. So when you think back at the moment in our ancient time, 100,000 years ago, this is what our brain needed. Instant gratification, and we give it to our brain with this feedback loop. So over time, I noticed this pattern. Struggle, retrieval, feedback, reward. It was always the same pattern. And I had the only job to bring it into my everyday life. In every situation, I repeated this pattern. Once this loop is in place for all of you, something powerful happens. You stop needing motivation because the system runs itself. This is what you need to look for. I have to be really honest with you. I didn't came here with 25 years old because I'm smarter than anyone. I didn't came here because I have more discipline than anyone here in this room. I got here for two reasons. First, because I was insanely enough to believe in me. And second, because I built a system that shifted me from pure discipline, from pure willpower, to just design. To design your everyday life to stay consistent. It's all about systems. Every obstacle, every single decision, you can hack with just understanding the wiring of your brain. If you take one thing from this talk today, then it's exactly that. Understand your brain, and you can hack everything around you. So, what did I do? I just spent the last years on learning how to return. Not once, not twice, not ten times. Every day I return. Every day I have this thought in my mind of, you don't need to post this video, or you don't need to stick with that business, you can just give up. But no, I return, I come back every day. So you need to build systems that support you with that. And my hope is really that maybe one person in this room starts to build this exact loop for yourself. And I want to thank you for listening to me. And uh, thank you very much.